Um, hi everyone, this is Kaiselyn Reed from 3 Mathematics. In this lesson, I am going to talk all about neutral geometry, specifically the Sakari Legendre theorem. So, in Sakari Legendre theorem, one thing they were able to prove was that the sum of the angles of a triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. In order to prove the sum of the angles of the triangle is 180 degrees, it requires the use of the parallel postulate. So, for simplicity's sake, first we will make the following definition. Given a triangle ABC, we're going to define that angle sum. We'll call that sigma of ABC to be the sum of the angles A, B, and C in this triangle. And so, with the notation, we can state that Sakara Lechandra theorem as any triangle the angle sum of the triangle ABC less than or equal to 180 degrees. This proof is divided into four steps. So let's begin. So the first step says, given any triangle ABC, the sum of any two angles is less than 180 or equal to 180 degrees. So here's the triangle ABC and let's consider the angles alpha and beta. Now, let's extend the side AB to another point D. And let's mark this exterior angle at vertex B. Let us call that delta. Now, by Euclid's proposition, the linear pair theorem, we know that the angle beta plus angle delta is equal to 180 degrees. And by Euclid's proposition, the exterior angle theorem, we know that angle alpha is less than angle delta. Now, we just do a little bit of mathematics. We can add the same quantity to both sides of the inequality. So alpha plus beta is less than delta plus beta. But delta plus beta, with the linear pair theorem, we know that's a 180 degrees. So we substitute the quantity and we have alpha plus beta is less than 180 degrees which is what we wanted to prove any two angles in a triangle is less than 180 degrees in the next part of this proof we'll show that the given any triangle abc we want to relate the angle sum of two triangles which constitute this triangle in other words if we create another point D on the side of AB that will actually split the triangle ABC into smaller triangle ADC and triangle BDC. How are the angle sum of all triangles related? Well, the step says that the angle sum of a triangle ABC, if we add two right angles and if we add 180 degrees to that, we will obtain the angle sum of the two smaller triangles. The angle sum of ADC plus the angle sum of BDC and the proof of this is just strict al strictly algebra. If we label all the angles, the angles of ADC as alpha, delta 1, and theta 1. And the angles of BDC as beta, delta 2, and theta 2. We can write the angle sums on the right as follows. And by rearranging delta 1 and delta 2 by Euclid's proposition, the linear pair theorem, um, we know those two angles add up to 180 degrees. And the remaining angles from the angle sum of the triangle ABC and this complete the proof of step 2 of sakari legendre theorem. Step 3 is a little bit complicated. Step 3 says, given a triangle ABC, we're able to construct a second triangle with the following properties. The second triangle have the same angles, have the same angle sum as the original triangle. And furthermore, one of the angles will be less than or equal to half of the size of the given angle of the first triangle. Visually, this says, that if we have the triangle ABC and angle A marked with lowercase a, given that triangle, we can create another triangle XYZ such that the angle sum of XYZ is equal to the angle sum of ABC. 
And furthermore, this angle x is less than or equal to half the angle vertex A. To begin this proof, consider the triangle ABC and do a little bit of construction. Create the midpoint M of the side BC. Once you mark the midpoint, this divides BC into two congruent sides, BM and MC. Then, draw a line from A to M and then extend this line AM to another point D such that AM and MD have the same length. We know we can do this by the Euclid's proposition length transfer. Furthermore, we have these two vertical angles by Euclid's proposition known that all vertical angles are equal. So, therefore, we have a lot of congruent parts and we actually have two congruent triangles. Triangles AMC is congruent to triangle DMB by side angle side. And so, since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we know these two angles are the same. And these two angles are the same. So, these two congruent triangles have the same angle sum. Furthermore, by step 2, we know that the angle sum of this large triangle ABC plus 180 degrees is equal to the angle sum of this smaller triangle that constitute it. So, the angle sum of ABC related to the angle sum of AMC and AMB. Furthermore, we already proven that the angle sum of AMC is equal to the angle sum of the MB. So, I could replace the angle sum of AMC with the angle sum the MB. And the angle sum of AMB is equal to itself. Therefore, again by using algebra, this proves that the angle sum of triangle ABC is equal to the angle sum of triangle ABD. And so, this gives us the first part of that we're, that we are trying to prove. Recall, giving a triangle, we're, we're trying to construct a second triangle with the same angle sum. And also, we want to have one, tri one angle less than or equal to half the angle of one of the original angles in the original triangle. So, we have our second triangle now to prove that one of those angles is less than or equal to half the original angle. Consider the original angle at A. This original angle is composed of the two smaller angles. We label, we label it as alpha and omega. Now, since this, since this angle A is equal to alpha plus omega, one of those two angles must be less than or equal to half the angle A. To see why, we can do a proof by contradiction. If both alpha and omega are greater than half of the angle A, their sum would be greater than the angle A. This is impossible. So one of the angle must be less than or equal to half the angle at A. So one of these angle is less than or equal to half of the angle at A. And both of these angles represent angle of this new triangle ABD because angle alpha is congruent to this angle alpha which is also an angle of ADB. And angle omega is one of the angles of adb therefore this new triangle has to have an angle which is less than or equal to half the angle at vertex a so finally we move on to the step four the final step in the proof of sakari legenda theorem recall what what we really want to prove so our ultimate goal is that Given a triangle ABC, the angle sum of the triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. To prove this, we're going to use a proof by contradiction. So let's assume. So let's assume instead that the angle sum of a triangle ABC is greater than 180 degrees. Will derive the contradiction. So, if this angle sum is greater than a 180 degrees, all there must be some 
number epsilon such that the angle sum is equal to 180 plus epsilon. Epsilon represents the axis of a 180 degrees. The next fact we need is subtle, something called the Archimedean property of real numbers. And this states that the following for any small number, there exists some constant that you can multiply so that it will that it will exceed any fixed number. In our case, the angle of A is fixed on epsilon. You can think of it a small number, there exists some large number. In this case, we'll choose a large enough power of 2 such that you multiply it by epsilon. It will be larger than the angle at A. This is due to the Archimedean property of real numbers, which is often added as an additional axiom later treatment of geometry. So, what we'll do is according to that number and the power of 2 that we need. We're going to apply step 3, a total of n times, which will produce a new triangle from our original triangle ABC. So, we're giving the triangle ABC the angle A, label A, lowercase a. From step 3, we can create a new triangle with the same angle sum, and this angle A is less than or equal to half of the angle A. Repeat, given this triangle, we will produce a new triangle with the same angle sum and this angle A sub 2 is less than or equal to half the angle A sub 1 now we can combine these two facts to show that the angle A2 is less than or equal to 1 fourth of or 1 half squared the angle A now from this second new triangle with angle A3 and angle A3 is less than or equal to half the angle of A2. Again, this triangle has the same angle sum combining this new inequality with the previous inequality. We can see that the angle of A3 is less than or equal to 1 8 or 1 half cube times the original angle A. Repeating this. A total of n times, we have a new triangle. We call this one PQR. This angle P will call that AN. Uh, that angle is less than or equal to one half to the n times. And the angle A and this triangle PQR has the same angle sum as the triangle ABC. So the triangle ABC had angle sum 180 degrees plus epsilon therefore the angle sum of pqr is the same quantity but we could also write the angle sum of triangle pqr in terms of the if in terms of these angles a sub n plus q plus r now remember we choose this number n so that 2n times epsilon was greater than the angle at a a little bit of algebra that shows us that that i divided that one divided by two to the n times is less than epsilon but then the transitive property a sub n is less than or equal to one over two to the n times a is less than epsilon therefore this new angle a sub n is less than epsilon then a sub n is less than epsilon add 180 to both sides of this then you have a sub n plus 180 is less than epsilon plus 180 but that's the angle sum of pqr therefore it's equal for for a sub n plus q plus r so Take the left side and the right side here and put them together. Subtract A sub N from both sides. You have 180 degrees, uh, sorry, 180 is less than Q plus R. In step 1, we prove that the sum of any two angles is less than 180, not greater than 180. This contradicts step 1. Therefore,
our original assumption that the angle sum of triangle ABC is greater than 180 degrees is false. All of the angle is not greater than 180. Then it must be less than or equal to 180 degrees. And this completes the proof of Sakari-Legendre theorem. Thank you.